All right, so today we're gonna to look at some trailers, some different dimensions of trailers and what the use cases is for each one. Now we are at Florida Utility Trailers in Apopka and the people here were really nice and allowed us to actually use their whole facility so that we can get some real measurements and not just things that we see online. We're gonna be talking about what are the use cases, but also the real dimensions inside the trailer, not just the exterior dimensions. How much width do you have when you have some padded walls? What about a reefer chute? You know, how much are you losing and how much do you lose for the doors? So let's jump in and look at reefers first. So here's one of their brand new reefer trailers. Let's jump inside. It's like freezing. You must have had it on recently. Fifty one feet, five inches long. It stops a little bit up there. So you're not getting all 53 feet, and that comes to the edge here of the crown. All right, so we're inside the reefer now, and some of the things I noticed right off the bat is the load chute actually doesn't come down very far. Now, this trailer actually has two load chutes, so it's a dual system that starts all the way back there in the reefer unit, which we're gonna go up there and see real fast. The ground is all aluminum, so it does stay very, very cold in here. And I think that's probably a really good thing. It being aluminum, it helps keep things at a good temperature and stay cold. When we opened up this trailer, I don't think it's been on for a really long time and it was still really cold in here. We do have padded walls, which is pretty typical in reefers. We're gonna see what we get on with, and we already know our length now, uh, but let's see what the height's gonna be with the reefer shoots as well. So on width, we have 97 inches. If you can see that, it's not even five inches. It's about four and three quarters of an inch that the reefer chute actually comes down. So our rule of thumb has always been about a foot, and that's pretty safe uh, to say for most trailers, but there are trailers that definitely don't take up that much room. And I'm gonna guess because it's a dual system, each one has to do a little bit less, so they're smaller. So if it does have a dual system, Look for maybe a six inch rule. All right, so this is gonna be a good example of a load bar. Basically, you extend it out, you put it on one side of the trailer, go over to the other side of the trailer, and then you could use this to crank up and down until it is snug. This is going to be a seat belt, basically, for your frame. So anything that was stacked up here won't be able to fall backwards, especially if you're doing big items such as crates or anything could be trade shows. These things are gonna be really, really important. We use these a lot in plants to make sure that the racks that we have these on, which have casters on our racks, can't go anywhere back. Now you could use straps and things like this, uh, but this is just way more convenient for a lot of use cases. All right, so now, as you know, this reefer unit is on the exterior of the trailer. So right on the other side of this, we have our big reefer unit that is going to be pumping in air into our system here. Now this is a dual cooling system, so that is why we have the two reefer chutes. What this does is it divides the air down the sides of the trailer instead of one just down the middle. This helps make sure that the sides of the trailer also get cooled. Now, that's actually really important because a lot of places wherever the sun hits, the walls are going to naturally get hotter. So is the roof, right? And so having them on the roof and on the sides helps out a ton. All right, so now let's check out what the height is going to be without the reefer chute. So here in the center, one of the really cool things and the biggest advantage of having a dual system is each system is significantly smaller. And what that allows us to do is use the center of the trailer to its full potential on the height. So let's see what that height is. Let's see what the distance is between the two dual chutes and how much room we have to actually take advantage of that height. So on the height, we actually have 103 inches high that we could stack freight or take freight that's already just naturally tall and utilize the center space. But can we actually fit a typical pallet or double stack of pallet in the center row? Yes, if you're doing 40 by 48 pallets, this is perfect because you have 56 inches between each shoe. All right, so one of the questions that we had is, for swing doors versus roll-up doors, how much room are you really losing with the door to be able to get a pallet through? 
And the answer is, come right over here, absolutely none. The hinges of the door on the outside here, you do not lose any space. You get the full width of this trailer from all the way from the back of the trailer, all the way from loading. So there's nothing to measure. It's perfect. All right, so this thing here is a side skirt. And we're gonna see a lot of different things as far as advancements that they've made in aerodynamics when it comes to trailers, which is extremely important because the amount of fuel that you can save by increasing the aerodynamics in your trailer is significant. So this is just one example of that. We're gonna look at another one right now on the back of this trailer over here. So here's another example. Anything that they can do to reduce drag is going to increase the fuel economy. All of these things are very, very important. We see them a lot on the tractor trailers themselves, or on the tractors rather, where you have that hood on the top of the truck. Same thing, everything that they can. What that does is it takes the wind and it puts it over the trailer, which is a little bit taller than the tractor, behind it, reducing drag. Check out the drive vans. All right, so here we have a 53 foot used utility trailer. We're gonna jump on in, get the specs of this one, see if it's any different from the reefer unit on height, even without load chute, and let's see what we get. So the first thing I can tell you is if you're ever gonna buy a trailer, get some handrails, because it's very hard to get in here without the handrails. Secondly, this is a wood floor trailer, so it is not gonna be like the reefer unit that we saw that had the aluminum floor. Now, that might change things as far as height goes by itself. All right, so starting off with width, this trailer is right at 99 and a half inches wide on the interior, so on the inside. Now, something that is different from this trailer to the reefer that we looked at is the padding on those walls was thicker and this metal plate was in front of it. So what it did was it kicked this metal plate out so that it was even with this uh, metal on the side of the trailer, right? So th this was flush. So there was no difference in the door. In this case, we are gonna have a difference in the entry versus the actual interior of the trailer. So let's see how much we lose with these guys. So we jumped from 99 and a half down to 98. So we lose about an inch and a half. Another thing to note is on the ceiling of this trailer, it doesn't have the padding that a reefer would have as well. So it's gonna get much hotter in here, and that's fine. It's not supposed to stay cool necessarily, but that is gonna give us a little bit more height. And so we're gonna measure within these beams though. That's gonna be really where we're getting cut off on our height. That puts us right at 112 and a quarter. So coming to the very edge here, where the doors would actually be closed, we have 52 feet, four inches. So we are shy of that 53 number, that's all the way to the back. So what we have here are E-tracks. So these are gonna be vertical E-tracks. They do come in trailers, both horizontal and vertically. Again, this one's running up and down. And these are really handy for strapping down things. So if you have uh, pallets or any type of cargo that you need to strap down, this is a good strap down point. Now, when you're in a floor that has a wood floor, obviously you have the opportunity to be able to drill into that floor if you wish to. A lot of people don't like doing that and I don't blame them, but having this on the wall to be able to put a strap in from here to straight over there, or even uh, certain load bars that come so that you can clip them right into here, straight over there, really helps. Also, we have customers that have uh, product that hang. I, I mentioned plants before and they do a similar thing where they actually hang on a rack and they get them all the way from top to bottom. Uh, I believe some other types of things such as produce or eggs are also uh, transported utilizing these racks.
We finally found a roll-up door. All right, let's hop in. Again, no handles. So here we're going to start seeing a real difference. Obviously we're going to lose a lot more when it comes to the roll-up door. Let's go ahead and check it out. So we're going to do interior first. Ninety-nine inches on the inside. That's once you clear the entryway. But when we have to clear the entryway here, what's the widest pallet that we can get in here? Eighty four inches or so, almost 85, 84 and a half. So it is substantially less than what you're gonna get on the swing doors. It just takes up all of it. Okay, so what about height now? Because the inside of the trailer probably is gonna be the same as your typical drive van. That's not gonna change too much as the trailer itself is pretty much the same. You still have the wood floor in this one, so it'll be a good comparison. But how much are we losing up high until we actually clear the door and how far back do we have to go when it's fully open? So on height, once we're cleared past the door is 109 and a half. But you're only going to get about 105 and a quarter when you have the door with the little hinges. So it's significantly less. Now from the actual end of the trailer, not this doorway section, but the actual inside of the trailer after the door closes, while it's open, you have to deal with 101 inches before you can take advantage of the height in there. So how are you gonna do that, right? Anything that you put in needs to be able to be under this height. So the height in there is really irrelevant. Please put handles in all your trailers. You have to use the lift gate to lift yourself on to the trailer later. Oh. All right, so we're not actually going to get this up and down because we don't have any power to be able to do it. Um, but this is gonna be your lift gate. So this is gonna be what you're gonna use with the pallet jack to put your product, your palletized product on here. This comes out, right? It comes all the way down to the floor. You're gonna ride your pallet jack on with your pallet. You're gonna flip the switch. And I believe, yep, is right over here. That will go ahead and lift you all the way up and then you can push it in with your pallet jack, come back out and get the next pallet. One thing more that I'll mention about this uh, lift gate system is even though it is very convenient, it is mostly found in roll-up doors and LTL. It will go against your weight. They are rather heavy. So it's gonna bring that 80,000 pound number down substantially for what you're able to take because you still have to beat the 80,000 pound number or anything on the road. So the heavier the trailer, the heavier the equipment overall, the less you're gonna be able to actually load. You ever wonder what the inside of a trailer looks like? All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some open trailers. So this is gonna be flatbed step decks primarily. What we have behind us right now is a step deck, also known as a drop deck. Uh, it might be 48 or 53, we're gonna find out, we're gonna measure right now what the real specs are. We're gonna go width, length, and height of both the bottom deck and the top deck. Now obviously, one of the main advantages of a step deck is it is lower on the bottom deck, meaning that you can go a little bit higher on the top, right at about 10 feet versus eight and a half for your standard flatbed. That's always been the rule of thumb. We're gonna look at it and see if that actually adds up. Is there a foot and a half between the bottom and top deck? We're gonna find out right now. All right, so as you can see on this trailer, all of your straps are gonna be on the driver's side, which is typical. So what you would do is you would take these straps, put it over your load and attach it to the other side. That will secure your load and make sure it doesn't shift during transit. If you ever need to drop your trailer for whatever reason, in your yard, at home, whatever, or just go get another trailer, you go ahead and drop the legs right down there.
All right, so on the height, we came in right at 37 and a quarter inches above the rear wheels. So on the width, we came in right at about 98 inches, but about a 16th of an inch shy. All right, so our bottom deck is gonna be right at 41 feet, nine inches. Top deck's right at 11. So for our height, we're right at 58 inches. That brings our total to 52 feet, nine inches, just under 53 feet. All right, so our last measurement is gonna be from top deck to bottom deck. And so we always assume there's about a foot and a half, when in fact, it looks like on this trailer and probably most, there's about one foot and eight inches. So a little over about two inches more than we thought. So we're looking at 20 inches total. All right, so we're gonna look at another step deck really quick and just confirm the height from the top to bottom, see if it varies from one to another. But what I can tell you is the straps are on the passenger side of this one. So either one is pretty common. Twenty and three quarters of an inch, so right about the same. All right, so next we're gonna check out this flatbed that I have behind me. We're gonna get some measurements for it, but I don't want just length, width, and height. I actually want three height measurements. And so I want the front, the middle or center, and then the rear. And the reason why is these aluminum trailers have a really nice bow or arc to them. And so when you get a heavy load, that bow will significantly decrease and may even flatten out with the rest of the trailer. And that helps a lot with the weight. Let's take a look. So up front, right behind the headboard, we have 53 inches on the height. Let's check out the center. In the center, we're at a staggering 58 and a half inches. That's a five and a half inch difference from the front to the center. And so now in the rear of the trailer, we have 51 inches. So we had 53 going all the way up to 58 and a half and finishing in the rear at 51. All right, come on over here and check this out. So the overall width on this one is right at 102 inches. So that's your max legal width of anything on the road. It is right at 102. Let me get this down so you guys can see just a little bit better. You see that? Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna get the length on this thing. All right, so total measurement on the length of this is 47 feet, two inches. So this would be a 48 foot trailer. So now we're underneath the trailer of the flatbed and you can see the airbag suspension. So this is the airbag itself. And then over here on the other side, we have a good view of the airbag motors that obviously lift and lower the trailer depending on how much air they're pumping into the airbag. All right, guys. What I wanna show you here really fast is actually a sliding rear axle. And so how it works is actually pretty cool and not how you would typically think, not how I thought anyway. So what happens is we have this wheel right here, we have another wheel way over here, and then a big space in between. And what you'll notice right away, it's easy to tell which one of these is actually made for to be a sliding axle by the trailer. You'll see here they have this indented well. There's a little switch right here that is going to inflate the airbags to lift up the trailer. When you do this, there's pins in here that need to be pulled. When you pull those pins, the brakes on this wheel right back here, the rear wheels are going to lock so they can't go anywhere. The other wheels will not, those will be free. So the trailer comes up, this locks, there's a lever in the front that needs to be pulled. And then the truck and trailer, the truck will back up. This, the brakes are on so it cannot move. The truck will back up and these tires will actually end up being right here. All right, so this is a reefer trailer and this actually has some E-Tracks in it too, but I'm gonna show you guys a new trailer with E-Tracks. It also has a side door, which is really helpful. Now, even though it has 
horizontal e tracks instead of vertical, it is still being used for plants most often. This is something that's sold as a plant trailer, is what I was just told from the office. It has an aluminum floor, it has a lot of padding all over the walls, and it has a reefer chute that goes along the top. It's not a dual reefer chute, it's a single. Come get a shot. And it smells so good. All right, so this is a really nice trailer. I don't know how much it costs, I didn't ask, but I'm sure that this one has got to be up there. It's got the black plating on the side. It's not your standard. It's got some kind of a shape to it, design. The inside is absolutely perfect. I mean, there's nothing out of place here. Lights run all the way down the trailer, and this one has a single reefer chute. But like the other ones, we're not seeing any reefer chutes that are hanging down substantially. I would say this one's right around four inches as well. All right, so I'm here with Mark over at Utility and Apopka, and obviously he just let us go through the whole yard, do all the measurements, and just really take a look at all these different kinds of trailers that they have, which is a vast selection. You have dry vans, reefers, flatbeds, step decks, dump trailers, yes. uh, just about everything here. What is it that you would say is your bread and butter? Reefers are the number one product for utility. I mean, they sell over more than anybody else in the country. They have over 50%. So uh, they've engineered that trailer extremely well. So that's why it, it sells. But um, You have over 50% share in the market for reefer trailers in the United States. Yes. yes. I would have never thought that. That's amazing. Yes. Okay. And so if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw on the sign outside, you have four locations here in Florida. Correct. What are those locations? We have here in Orlando, Miami, Tampa, and Lakeland. And you service and sell at all those locations just like this one? Correct. Full service, parts, service, rental, uh, sales, so you new and used. So. New and used. And you, you said rental as well? Correct. Well, that's very cool. Okay. Right. And so when you say full service, you're talking about drums, the suspension, the oh, yeah. everything, the siding? Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah, very cool. Body work. Yeah. We don't work on the units, the reefer units, but we have Thermo King and Carrier nearby to help us repair those. And this location, I believe, or, or Tampa might have been the first, but it's been around for a long time, right? It has. Family owned, same company, for the same family for 50, 60 years. Over 50 years? Yeah. yeah. And how long have you been here? 17 years. That's a long time by seems, itself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seems like five, but... All right. So you know the ins and outs of this place, though. Yes. All right. And so what would you say is the main mission of utility of Apopka and, and Miami and Tampa, you know, all the ones that you guys have? Sure. Uh, just to provide the best service to help our customers succeed. So we do that and then, you know, everything takes care of itself. You guys must be doing pretty good. I mean, utility, obviously, having over 50% of the reefer market in the United mm -hmm. States is very, very impressive. And anytime that I think of trailers myself, I always think utility right off the bat. Anytime I've seen them, they've always been really quality equipment. And you guys have been able to see that too. All the ones that we went through, especially the reefer units, the floors, the walls, uh, some of the reefer units themselves, the reefer chutes, you know, the dual system that you guys have, it all looked very, very, it, it just looked like quality material. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you so much. I really appreciate you letting me My come pleasure. in and take a look at everything. It was really beneficial for us. Oh, I'm happy to have you. If you guys ever need anything as far as trailers go, if you're thinking about getting a trailer, you should definitely be thinking about talking to Mark over here, a utility trailer, a popcorn. Thank you.